Eric from Ember. You're watching Aftershocks TV. So yeah, so guys, recently Ultimate Classic Rock, you know, it's a I like you guys like Ultimate Classic Rock at all. It's, I think yeah, it's a pretty good uh, publication. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, they came out with a top 15 bands of the Sunset Strip. You know, and now, you know, obviously when people think of Sunset Strip, you know, you get to think, obviously, Motley Crue, Poison, Dokken, right? Um, and a lot of that was, of course, because of MTV and how they, you know, glorified L.A. pretty much all day, every day. Um, but there was a lot of bands in Hollywood that were playing the strip going back to, you said, to the 60s. We were talking about this before we came on. Uh, you know, bands like the Birds and Buffalo Springfield and so on. The Doors in the 70s. The doors, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, they were known with the whiskey. That was like where the whiskey became the whiskeys because of the Doors. And then, of course, Van Halen in the late 70s and 80s. But that's when it really, you know, took off. And then MTV, obviously, you know, took it from there. It was known for, you know, obviously not just rock, but the debauchery of it as well. That was like the thing that was attached to it, too. It was just very debaucherous. Mm -hmm. And that's what sold it. So, I mean, there is a lot more to this, this strip than just, you know, hair and glam metal. So you have to see that article. You know, I was thinking, like, it'd be cool. But let's let's do, let's do our top 15 Sunset Strip bands. Let's get into that. Uh, let's start with our guest, Richie. Won't you tell 15? us what you got? 15 yeah. or whatever you got top whatever it is <laughs> 15 i got 15 of them i did the 15 yeah Jeez. wow wow yeah. i think i've got seven or eight maybe okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right so uh, van halen has to be number one ah yeah okay i think a lot of, Amen. if you ask anyone a big band on the sunset strip that made it van halen i think will be probably top of 99 mm -hmm. of the list yeah um in, massively influential fantastic songs oh, great yeah. musicians one of the best front men in rock um lasting impact on music um even now you know like first album in 1978 when it came out that didn't really sound like anybody else like mm. completely reinvented guitar playing for a lot of people mm -hmm. um van halen has to be number one for me uh, I know they're not a Sunset Strip fan, Matt. You were saying, but I've always been a huge fan of Y and T. Mm -hmm. um, I know they played a lot of shows on in you know down around all yeah. over California over the years. Mm -hmm. um, never really broke, um, mm -hmm. and I can never understand why. Uh, I think they've got one of the best singer guitar players in hard rock, Dave Manichetti. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. On play a couple of years ago, they did a two and a half hour show, um, and they no guitar solos, no, or no, uh, you know, like no wanking solos, uh, no drum solo really. And mm -hmm. McKenna was on stage for two and a half hours, stang his ass off, played great, mm -hmm. and he's probably close to seventy now if he's not. Yeah, he's not yeah, must be. And he's the only member of that classic lineup that's still alive. Mm -hmm. um, I think. They tried to change their sound a little bit in the mid '80s, trying to become more MTV friendly. Mm -hmm. Trying to hurt them a little bit, they messed around with a few different producers. Uh, did try to do a couple of covers to please the label, but I think they're a massively influential band. And the interesting thing for me about Y&T is when I've interviewed a lot of the uh, the trash metal musicians from California, either from San Francisco or LA. They they wax poetical about Y and T. They, they absolutely do. worship the band, mm -hmm. even though their music mightn't sound a lot like them. Y and T had a massive influence on them. Mm -hmm. um, I'm see. I'm going to name bands that you're going to just name as well. Uh, sure. So yeah. Right, oh, yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. well, Rat. Massive yeah. Rat. All sure, yeah, huge Rat fan. Uh, Out of the cellar to me was a wow moment when you're getting into hard rock and metal and you're into Maiden and some of the English bands, and then someone hands you, you know, this is a band from the US or a hard rock band. And I think Rat was one of the mm. first ones. And um, mm. I think that the first three albums had come out, but someone played me out of the cellar first, and I just couldn't get enough of them. I had to get Invasion and I had to get Dancing Undercover. Mm. Uh, mm. It was just a huge, huge band for me. Um, Wasp, I've always been a, a Wasp fan. Yeah. Um, mm. I think Blackie's brought out you know, a lot of good music, even the, the recent stuff he's done. Uh, he's, he's He might have gone off, you know, off the deep end lyrically a bit 
you know, compared to what he what he was known for. <laughs> sure. But um, you know, they're a, again, they're a fantastic band and the Headless Children album that he brought out in eighty eight, I think, is a masterpiece. Yeah, brilliant, yeah. Um but I'm not dissing their earlier work because the debut album is great and I, I love The Last Command and Inside the Electric Circus is a bit ske- sketchy for me, but you know, they're a very influential band as well when it comes to uh, I think the LA scene. Yeah, the scene. Mm-hmm. Dawkins is a, another big one. Mm-hmm. Um, it's all to do with the singer and the guitar player. They had George Lynch yeah. and and Don. I think you know they they complemented each other very well. I think Don was had the pop sensibility. George brought you know the crunch and the fantastic guitar playing. Uh, this is the one I mentioned to you off air, Matt. That uh, rough cut. Mm, yeah. Nice they sure. sunset, would they be a Sunset Strip band? Yes, they would be. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Paul Shartino is one of my favorite singers. Yeah. Um, their debut album is amazing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it came out in '85. I think Tom Allen produced it. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And I've interviewed Paul, and he said what killed them is that they waited too long to get the album out. That all the bands like Rat and Doc and uh, they got their albums out before them. And mm-hmm. uh, they wanted Ronnie James Dio to produce it. And they waited around for a while. And then when they got Tom Allen to do it, they were kind of yeah. chasing everyone else. Yeah. Um, the last band I wrote down, and again, Matt, you can tell me if it's a Sunset Strip band, but I'm a fan. Letter Wolf. Would they be considered Sunset Strip? Uh, you know, it's a good question. Um, well, someone's got to look it up. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm on it right now. I'm on it right now. Okay, Matt, go Give for it. Give me two seconds. I, you know, I, I think they would be considered because they're from, uh, they're from Huntington Beach, Orange County. So yeah, you could yeah, get, get an LA band. So they yeah. get it. Yep, absolutely. There you go. I've always been a fan of them. Uh, the Street Ready album is fantastic. Um, mm-hmm. They never broke. Um, but I, you know, they, they got the three triple axe attack. They're known for that. Mm-hmm. Um, I know. I, I know they only had a couple of albums, and then they broke up for a while and got back together. Mm-hmm. And Dean Roberts, the drummer, is the only original member that's left. Mm-hmm. But um, again, they're another band that pops up when I'm talking to musicians from around that time, from that area, that people cite as being an influence on them because of the uh, the a lot of the guitar playing is over the top. Because when you've mm-hmm. got three guitar players, it's like, oh, oh, yeah. what are they doing? Mm-hmm. Um, but they never broke either, even though they were on Island Records, which is a major label. Mm-hmm. Um, that's all I got. No, it's good. I'm glad you got the, the Rough Cut and Leather Wolf in there, too. It's, mm. just, it's too a little bit uh, you know, off the beaten path type of band, so that's good. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So uh, I can jump in. A lot of this is going to yeah, be a lot of crossover because Richie and I grew up yeah. in the same circles, this in the same bands. I mean, obviously you can't argue with Van Halen. Don't need to say any more about that, but what hasn't been said. Um, Rat would probably um, you know, if you just go back into the eighties scene and just leave Van Halen aside. So the eighties hair scene, not LA based, I guess, with Rat and Winger would be my two you know, favorite bands, you know, Winger same here. LA, We've talked about that, yeah. Mm-hmm. We have hundred percent. So they, they can do no wrong. I mean, uh, I remember the first time I heard out the cellar and it was like hearing that Bow Hill production. It was like, what the fuck am I listening to? It was like, I couldn't get enough mm-hmm. of it. I actually went back talking about Metallica earlier, but I went back and listened to uh, out the cellar and um, recently and uh, just start to finish. And it's just, again, it's a flawless piece of work. Yeah. It's one of the best albums mm-hmm. of the decade for mm-hmm. me. It's, it still holds up today. Um, Wasp again, you know, big fan back in the day. Saw them uh, in Donington, I think, in yeah. '86, if I can remember. '87. Um, '87, when uh, yeah. Blackie was up on stage and throwing raw meat out of the stage, and you had the, the chick <laughs> up on board and she was tied up against yeah. something and yeah. all yeah. that kind of stuff. So, uh, yeah, I was a big Blackie mm-hmm. fan. They obviously went off, the, they went off the rails a little bit. Some of the albums went a bit dark and Kill Fuck Die and all that kind of stuff. It's all right. A couple of songs in there. Oh, Tommy. I'm back. Hang on a second. There you go. Okay. You froze w- Wi-Fi there. better not start giving me a uh, jib tonight. But um, <laughs> I, I know that um, um, I saw him on the, on the recent tour. And uh, <laughs> I think he played nine songs, 55 minutes, and back in tracks. I was going, like, really, Blackie? Is that your legacy? Oh, yeah, that's right. You saw them. Uh, yeah, yeah. Not, not good. And just a few mm. others just jumping around. Obviously, Motley. You know, I was a big Motley fan back in the day. There's a band that really caught my interest from the first album right up to Feel Good. 
um, and then they just kind of disappeared off the radar. But the window that I loved them, I loved them. You know, most yeah. people did, I guess. Um, yeah, that's the way Absolutely. to look at it. And you know, and uh, Y and T. Um, you know, we're going to talk about them perhaps in a different segment. But that band are just tremendous. Um, even the album, even the albums they released in the nineties, that like when they sold one copy, are fantastic. Yeah. Um, you know. Um, but yeah, I definitely think summertime, summertime girls didn't help them <laughs> to Richie's point earlier. <laughs> uh, you know, they, it's almost like they tried too hard. Even though the album is good and Contagious is a good album, they just tried too hard on the sound and the scene and whatever else, and they just got lost in the shuffle and one of those things. Maybe poor management didn't get the breaks, whatever it was. And uh, that's kind of it for me. There's a few others dotted in there. It's, I have a few bands I don't like, Faster Pussycat, LA Guns. I know Poisoner, Pennsylvania. We're quite right, LA band. Yeah. And, and Poison really is, is, even though they were from Pennsylvania, you know, they made their mark in were, some yeah. sense. So I, they'd be I, considered, can, yeah. I have one line over here that I don't really like, Bullet Boys. Were Bullet Boys L.A.? They're L.A., yes, and I don't like them either. So, yeah. See, there's a yeah. band I just never, one of those yeah, bands I never, I, like I never, I never, I never kind of, Guns N' Roses, I was never Yeah, I couldn't get a, I couldn't no, get into just, Bullet I have Boys one either, section yeah. here, Fast and Pussy, got L.A. Guns and Boys and Quite Right Guns. I don't, don't hate any of them. a matter of fact, mm. I've got like, all their albums almost by every band but uh, just they, they when you when you separate like the van halens or the the wasps or the the motleys the rats they that, that are, they're second tier to me sure uh, they just weren't quite good enough you know mm. hey matt would jeffrey be considered a sun strip strip band hey, well yeah i mean i'll i'll, mm. I'll, I'll bring that up in a second well i'll, I'll just start from my thing but yes yeah, so they would be because uh, he was also an angel, right? So, yeah. That's right. Um, and Angel, even though they're originally from DC, I technically I got them at number fourteen here on my list as Angel, uh, because technically I I consider them a Sunset Trip because that's once again where they made their mark. I mean, even though they're from DC, they really weren't known back mm -hmm. there. It was until they obviously moved yet to LA where they got signed by you know uh, Gene Simmons or was it Gene Simmons? That he did sign them, right? Sign yeah, him. he did. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I'll start with my yeah, Guns N' Roses. I'm not a huge Guns N' Roses fan either, but I mean, you can't argue with with Appetite no. for Destruction. I mean, it's a phenomenal record. And if everything else they've done, yes, not a fan. Uh, but I put them at 15 just for that record alone. I mean, yeah, it is I a great agree. record. It really is. Like I said, Angel is 14. I just, I, really, I liked Angel. I grew up, my dad was a fan, so I listened to that a lot as a kid. And um, that was, once again, the 70s mostly or really early 80s before it really took mm -hmm. off, the Sunset Strip. But I'm um, definitely a fan. Number 13, I had Wasp. I mean, I'm not going to really add too much more to that, as you guys already said. I oh, I, don't, I guess I am a, a handful of years younger than you guys. So I remember when they first came out and when Animal, you know, when I first heard of Animal, you know, <laughs> just fuck like a beast. The mystique around the, the you know, the, the band yeah. was huge as a, as a youngster, you know, just hearing about them, not even hearing the songs. I knew all about this mystique from them before I even heard a song from them. I was just like, yeah, that's the sickest band ever. So yeah, I got Wasp in there at 12. I gave I'm not I, I like their earlier stuff, Striper. Um oh, I and Striper, I, I forgot to mention that. I, mean, I, I missed them. Yeah, yeah geez, right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hi. Sorry, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> because I mean to me, like I said, great. I love their earlier stuff. And just for the fact that for yeah, a band stuff. like that that was throwing out Bibles when you're in the the the, the land of debauchery. That's just rebellious as is, is can be. You know what I mean? If you want to think of rebellion, that's right. just completely off the beat. So anyway, yeah, Striper, uh, fan of them, obviously, yeah, number 12. Number 11, I put Keel. So Right to Rock, I love mm -hmm. that record. It was one of the first records I bought. Me and my brother actually chipped in to buy that when I first saw the video. Uh, there was a station in New York. It was It's a UHF, you know, independent station that used to play all these L.A. Uh, metal videos, like – throughout the day and so that was the first time i'd seen that and we learned a lot about these la bands like autograph and so forth from from mm. um that channel it's probably you didn't have autograph tom i know you're that's your, your guilty I, pleasure I, so there's another one i forgot about <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um number 10 i have is warrior you know uh they only had the uh, one album bob love warrior yeah, he did. Yeah, fighting, fighting for the earth. It's it's, it's, it's a yeah. solid, a solid record. They only really had that one record. They didn't put out another one for like fifteen or thirteen mm -hmm. years, I think it was. Um, yeah, Joe Floyd's a great dude, and you know, I thought right. he was a, a real good uh, guitarist. So yeah, number ten, and then just getting to my top ten at number nine, a Great White. Obviously, um, I love the the first Great White, the self title record. I love that. Mm -hmm. Stick it. I love the cover of Substitute from The Who. I love that. So uh, not really a huge fan of like the Once Bitten, Twice Shy kind of era, but I did like the early 
uh, great white is, is definitely a bit heavier, you know, than the later stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I have Dokken in there next. Like you said, you guys pretty much, you know, said what we had to say about Dokken. Right behind that, too, I got Lynch Mob. I mean, I kind of just put them right there, too, because mm. they're a Sunset Strip band right after that, you know, after obviously Dokken and so forth. So, you know, I do love George Lynch. I think he's a great guitarist. Then, yeah, Quiet Right, I got after that. Really, I'm not a huge Quiet Right fan, but I do love Metal Health. That was one of the first really metal albums i i you know grew up loving sure. you know obviously it was the first one here i know in the states to go number one the first uh metal album so uh i always have a soft spot in my heart but yeah the rest of their stuff i was yeah. not a fan of i really thought yeah. they were a very average band and then top five i got la guns i do like la guns a lot i thought they were really like like a a, a grittier version they're very similar to me obviously to, to guns and roses but i yeah, really like the same groove yeah yeah i love their grit uh, for number four is an interesting one. Is is a band from the late seventies, Legs Diamond. I don't know if you guys know oh, much yeah. about Legs well, Diamond. Yeah, great okay. band. Yeah, they were, they were considered the American Deep Purple. As a lot Their of people, their debut album is fantastic. It's great. It's first two are awesome. That's right. The first two, you're right. Fantastic album. Fantastic yep. and very underrated band. Right. Um, my opinion. And then yeah, the top three cool. like you guys. Number three, I had Motley Crue. Number two, Rat, and of course, number one, Van Halen. Nothing else to be said there. Yeah, that's the yeah. strip. But I got, yeah. I got the, the. I was in, I was on the Sunset Trip twice actually. Once maybe six years ago, mm -hmm. and I remember driving or walking down the strip, standing outside the whiskey, and I was, I was actually just standing there going, "Holy shit, balls! I'm on the Sunset Trip." Like I, it was like was, Richie and I read about this. It was like another sure. planet, you know. And here mm -hmm. I was standing there, and then I was standing outside the whiskey, and then there was, it was a Sunday morning. I remember. And uh, the, the side door was open and there was guys moving in furniture. And I was going, mm. can I go in there? And the guy said, oh, I don't give a fuck. So whatever, I'm, only, I'm moving in chairs or do whatever you want. So I walked in mm. and then I was going, holy shit balls, I'm in the whiskey. Like this was like mind blowing shit to me. Mm. I was looking at the stage and looking at the photographs on the walls and shit. And then um, a couple of years ago, then with Bob Nalbandian, that's when, uh, you know, when I was in obviously the LA area and, um, uh, met him uh, in, in, not in on the Sunset Strip, but that was the time I was in town, and um, you know went to the Rainbow, and I saw um, you know the Lemmy statue, and had a beer in there, mm -hmm. and that was just a trip, just to um, I was like sixteen again, you know, and kind of almost visualizing, holy shit, what went down here back in '87, you know. Mm -hmm. So it was just one of those things where I was, uh, I'm glad I saw it, you know. Yeah, I, I think everybody, right? I mean, I know myself too. I mean, even though I was in the same country, being on the other opposite coast growing up, I mean, I, that's all I could do in those long, cold winters was just sit there, and watch MTV, watch the rat videos, and <laughs> see see all the women and all the stuff, and be like, "Wow, what the hell am I doing here, man? I, I need to get eighteen quick and get the fuck out of here and go to LA." Yeah. I, I, I did want, and I lived in LA for eight years, so obviously, I spent a lot of time on the the yeah. strip, and uh, it's not obviously the same. Hmm. you know in the 2000s as it was in the 80s that was just the you know the, the, the obviously the glory days of it i know i, I always said that i just you know I, I didn't grow up in the right time i was definitely uh you know but i used to dream same thing about being there and it is the, the whiskey i mean the, the whiskey is really not a great place to be honest no. with you and it's small it's, it's really it's small, small and it's not a great place to see a show hmm. to be honest with you but yeah. because of it's you know i mean all those bands started there it's just so iconic you know what i mean for for so long but uh yeah you know, LA is a great place for for music, rock and metal, especially. LA is a great place to just go and visit for like for visit. a few days and just get out. And yeah. get out, yeah, get absolutely. Out. Yeah. And yeah. Tommy, what's the other thing that a lot of those bands have in common? They never played in Ireland during their heyday. Yeah, never, mm. never. Yeah, because when well, Richie and I came over here, then we ended up going to see those bands. Like we were yeah. looking at Striper, uh, and yeah. oh, I can't remember half the bands. I saw a lot of them. Mm. Like we were because we, they never toured Europe and. Matt and yeah. I talked about this. That's mm -hmm. why, and you, exactly. you I think I took, I stole your your line, Richie. That bands like Bon Jovi, when the scene started to change, you know, not eight, 89, 90, whatever it was, and Bon Jovi came up with Keep the Faith, and they went, Well, I guess we're not making the money here. Let's go to China, Asia, Europe. And they were still playing stadiums. Bands like Slaughter, Warrant, Motley, whatever, they stop, they just never give the UK for the most part in Europe any attention. So then when the shit hit the fan, they know where to go. They had mm -hmm. nowhere to go. I missed the band, Matt, and, and I'll bring them up. Or would you consider mm -hmm. them a Sunset Strip band? And I'm a big fan. Black and Blue. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, totally, yeah. Even though yeah. I think they're from Portland originally in Oregon. Yeah, but Portland. But they, yeah, they're definitely a, a Sunset Strip band because yeah, they, uh, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, that, that is an underrated band. I agree with you. Black and Blue is yeah, really good. Yeah, Jamie St. James. Yeah. I should have used this for the next segment, mm. but did it. it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh. <laughs> 